Welcome to the Brass and Woodwind Shop. A lot of people ask me what tools they need to get started in band instrument repair. That question is hard to answer because a lot of it depends on what types of repairs you want to do and also what brands and types of instruments are in your area. It also depends upon what country you're in. In the United States and Canada, it's fairly easy to get these tools, but in many other countries, it's hard to find them or shipping is very expensive. There are many more tools that you could use for brass instrument repair, but the ones I'm going to show you are just to get you started, and some of these tools you may not even need if you are not going to do certain types of repairs. The best way to find tools, if you can do it, is find a music store that's going out of business and then buy their tools. Look in the description below for a link to the video about where you can find band instrument repair tools and how to buy them. Most of these tools come from Freeze Tools, some come from Allied Supply, and I'll leave the link for those companies in the description below. Allied sells only to music stores, so if you are a music store, you can set up an account with Allied Supply. Freeze Tools will sell to anybody, but you can get a discount on the price if you have an account with them. So if you're a music store, be sure to get an account with them. I'm going to go through the tools and briefly explain them. This is a bench motor, and it's expensive, but it is essential for any brass instrument repair shop. These are assembly mandrels, and they hold the instruments while you're soldering them and working on them. Uh, these are all uh, mandrels here, and these are used for dent removal. And this is a set of nine sold from Faris Tools. These will be able to reach most of the dents in the straight areas of instruments. And these are two dent rollers, and these are also essential for getting out dents in bell flares of instruments. These are threaded dent balls, and they have threading on the inside so that you can screw them onto some of the mandrels. And there are four different sizes that I recommend. There's a larger size not on here, and you usually only need those for tubas and sousaphones. So you can get those two if you want. There are several different threaded mandrels that can fit these dent balls onto them. There's a straight one, the one with a slight curve. This one is for French horns, and that works very well on them. And there's also a dent ball that goes on there that works well for French horns that you can buy separately. There are a couple other smaller threaded mandrels that you can use for various dents on various instruments. And then there is the trumpet lead pipe dent mandrel, and that has a threaded end on it, and that can be used with some of the smaller balls for trumpet lead pipes. Over here I have some other dent tools. These are called knuckle dent rods for the knuckles on trump mostly trumpets, but a few other instruments. These are also threaded dent rods for various baritones or other types of tubing that you might need to get into. This is a trombone dent rod, and there's actually a set of 13 of these. I only put one here for the video. These are different mallets and hammers that I recommend. These are the rawhide mallets. There's a small one and a large one. This is a set of five different dent hammers, and those are used for a lot of different things. This is a V-block. It goes into the vise to hold the mandrels. In this picture, I do not have a vise, but you're definitely going to need a vise. Then I have some files. These are needle files, and they're used for the small areas that you need to file down. This is a tone hole file, usually used for saxophone tone holes, but you can use it for other things too, for brass instruments. And then another general purpose file would be good to have. This area here is for soldering, and it's just for soft soldering, not for silver soldering. There's the solder and the flux, and also there is a flange burnisher to help burnish down and get the flanges to get closer to the instrument. And this is a, called a triangular knife, or it's also called a solder scraper. And that is used for cleaning up some joints, like on the inside of tubing and things like that. And this is for cleaning it up before you solder and not for cleaning it up after you solder. And safety glasses are very important for soldering and other things too, but especially for soldering. Then there are two different sizes of soldering clamp. And you'll probably want more than just one of each of these. And also there's a micro torch. And the micro torch will get you started. If you do a lot of soldering, you're definitely going to want an acetylene torch. And this has a hose on it. It's connected to a tank. You can buy the hose in the regulator, but you cannot have the tank sent to you. So you'll need to get the tank of acetylene locally. If you cannot get an acetylene tank locally, you're going to want to solder with a different type of gas. So look locally and see what there is in your area. This micro torch is used for a lot of different things. And you can also use it a lot on woodwind instruments. So get one of these, whether you use it for soldering or not. 
The micro torch does not work well for soldering large areas, but you can get away with soldering in small areas. So you might want to start with this and then move up to an acetylene or some other torch later if you need to. This is a soft jawed pliers. It works very well for removing stuck valve caps. A jeweler's saw works well for cutting very fine cuts. This is a pad leveling tool, usually used for woodwinds, but it does have a few applications for brass instrument repair. And here is a valve mirror. It's used in aligning the valves on instruments. This is called a pin vise, and I keep a needle spring in there, and I use that for various things. And then the woodwind screwdrivers. They're usually used for woodwind instruments, but they work for brass instruments too for various things. This is a block of wood that I use for putting things on. It helps with putting, installing corks or whatever else. I do not think any of my suppliers sell these, but you can just get a chunk of wood and make sure that it's flat and you can use that. Two pliers that I use all the time are the smooth jawed flat pliers and the round nosed pliers. This is a wire cutter and that's used for various things for brass and woodwind repair. The hacksaw is used for various things. Most of you have that one or you can get it from a local hardware store. This is a set of 101 dent balls. It's used for a lot of different things, but I would say that this one is mandatory if you're going to do any dent removal. And this is a dent cable used to get around corners on some but not all instruments. And you have to be careful when you use this. It can do damage but it works very well at getting in some of the hard to reach areas where you need to get out the dents. This is a bench vise. It works very well for holding things while you're working on it or for other various things for bending some types of metal, things like that. These are ground casing mandrels and I only put five of them out. I own several more than that. You're probably only going to want to start with a few of these and these are specific for different brands of instruments. They are measured in thousandths of an inch and you order the thousandths of an inch you want. For Yamaha and Bach Stradivarius, you would order 664. King is 660. Bundy and Student Model Bach is 650. So you just order the ones that you will likely need for the trumpets and other instruments in your area. In the Freeze catalog, they do have different sizes of mandrels that you will need for different types of instruments. These are called tuning slide expanders and there's one size for trumpet, one size for French horn and trombone, and then another size for baritone. I rarely use those for expanding slides, but I do use them a lot for other things, like especially for holding instruments while I work on them and solder on them. String for stringing French horn valves, mouthpiece puller. Uh, Faris has a mouthpiece puller, but I really do not like that one. This one works very well. It's a Bobcat mouthpiece puller and you can get it from Amazon or from Ally. This is a set of mouthpiece arbors and they're used for getting the dents out of the shanks of mouthpieces and you can also put them in the bench motor and use them for holding mouthpieces while you polish the mouthpieces. These three are called tuning slide pliers and I don't use them for every tuning slide that I pull but they do work well for some tuning slides that are stuck. There's a small, medium, and large for trumpet, trombone, and baritone, and tuba. These are drumsticks. I often use these for removing tuning slides. You can cut them to length as you need them, or you can grind them down as you need them. If you have a friend who's a percussionist, they probably have some leftover drumsticks they do not use. See if you can get those from them. This is a set of 60 drill bits, and this covers most of what you'll need for drill bits. And this is sandpaper. You can get sandpaper locally at your hardware store or wherever. You'll need some various grits of sandpaper for various things that you'll need to do, but that can be obtained locally. Razors, you'll need a lot of razors. Again, you can get that locally. This is a little bit of wicking, and I have a larger roll right here, and that is used for buffing on small places on instruments and also for pulling some tuning slides. These are pipe cleaners for cleaning in small areas of instruments. Again, you can get those locally. Cotton swabs for cleaning instruments also. This is a snake that cleans inside of instruments. Very handy for cleaning inside. Uh, rags, you'll need a lot of rags. Several different sizes of brushes, all the way from a little tiny one up to a larger one, used for a lot of different things for cleaning instruments. Buffing supplies that I recommend to get started. You could buy a lot more, but this will get you started. Uh, you need a right-handed spindle to go into the bench motor. And that will hold the buffing wheels for you. And then get a various array of buffing wheels. And also buffing gloves to protect your hands. For buffing compound, 
you're going to want red rouge, white buffing compound, and triple E. And those really are the only three you're going to need to get started. Silver polish, you can probably get that locally at a hardware store or somewhere, but Allied and Freeze have that also. Quartz felts and springs and things like that. Freeze sells assortments of 100. You might want to start out with assortments of 100 and then see what you're going to need and then go from there because there are many different sizes. I even have more underneath here. There are many that you could get. Um, I'll see what you need and then order what you do need. And these are not very expensive, so those can be obtained quite easily. And there are well springs. There are many different types. Just order the ones that you will need for the most common brands of instruments in your area. Water key corks, there are a few different sizes. Just order a few of each and then uh, replace them as you use them up in that way. One thing I did not mention is chemicals. Look in the description below for a link to the video about chemicals. To get started, you really only need phosphoric acid. Fariz sells a product called Lime and Scale Remover. And Allied sells a product called Slime Away. Either one of those works well, and just order a little bit to get started. If you want to clean larger instruments, then get a larger tank and put more chemicals in there. But usually you will not need that much just to get started. I hope this video has been helpful. Look in the description below for links to related videos, and also there will be a link to the video about woodwind tools. Also keep in mind that there is some overlap between brass and woodwind tools. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos.